Hey guys, it's Melissa here. This is my first time on YouTube in a really, really, really long time. And I really didn't really try to make this video. It was one of those things where I came on here to do general research, which is what I normally do. Um, more so for a surgery that I'm having in September and I couldn't really find that much stuff for it. And I couldn't find it from the survivor or breast cancer warrior perspective, so I was like, you know what, let me get on YouTube and share some of my story. And also I realized there weren't a lot of women on co women of color sharing their stories um, visually. Um, so I'm signing up for the job and hopefully you guys will find the information useful. If not, it will be therapeutic for me and I'll, you know, it'll hopefully help me as well talking about it and sharing my journey. So um, I actually just finished chemo two weeks ago. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I'm so very excited. Chemo sucks. I was able to keep a pretty positive attitude mostly throughout it, but you know, it's one of those things I never want to have to do again. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. I wanted to share with you guys today seven things that I wish I knew about chemo before I started. Not necessarily that it would have changed anything because I had to do chemo anyway, but I think it just would have helped mentally prepare me a little bit better for some of those things that I didn't see coming. So here are seven things that no one really talks to you about when I talk to you about chemo. And I wish I would actually show some of these things in the movies a little bit more. So number one on the list is gaining weight. You absolutely can gain weight on chemo. Um, I don't know why Hollywood keeps making everyone shrink into frail old people. Um, that's not everyone's experience. And for the most part, it has to do with steroids. So a lot of the chemo drugs that they give you through your IV, they give you pre-meds first, and in those pre-meds are steroids. And steroids make you hungry. And when you're hungry, you can eat a lot of crap <laughs> that you don't need to eat. Um, so I actually ended up gaining about five pounds and I went up and down, up and down, but I would say from beginning to end, I gained about five pounds on chemo and it was surprising because I originally was small when I started and when I find, found out I had to do chemotherapy, I got really scared because I thought I was going to disappear. Um, that was not the case, thankfully, but you know, it's just one of those things, those myths that I just wanted to address. Number two is food aversions. So it's very similar to anyone who's ever been pregnant. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, there's, you have your favorite foods in the whole wide world. And when you get pregnant, now you can't stand them. It's very similar with chemo. Um, for me, I would use the example of fish. So I love fish. I live on an island. We eat lots of seafood. And the smell of anything remotely close to the sea <laughs> would just like make me feel so, so nauseous and sick. So um, it was a bit hard for me because I had to find other things to eat and I had planned to eat a little bit healthier during chemo because I mean, who doesn't want to eat healthier when you're already sick? Um, plan had to be aborted. So <laughs> I just ate what I felt like, which was a lot of like cheese, a lot of pasta, a lot of things that, you know, aren't necessarily so healthy for you, but they tell you on chemo, you know, instead of like trying to eat healthy and, you know, not eating anything at all, if you can't even eat anything healthy, eat something, you know, the goal is to eat something. You have to keep up your energy um, and you need food to do that. So I listened to them and I ate. Okay, number three is insomnia-ish. I mean, it's not the fact that you don't sleep at all because you're tired and you're exhausted, so you do sleep. It's just that your sleep patterns can get really, really off. So you know how we talked about those pre-meds? Another pre-med that they put, that they can put in your IV is Benadryl. And you know what Benadryl does. It knocks you out, is what it does. So um, I would have chemo in the like late morning, early afternoon, and then I'd come home and I'd sleep for about five hours straight. That would put me smack dab until like eight, nine o'clock time frame. That's the time I was waking up. So I was up all night long and it took me a couple days to kind of get my sleep pattern kind of sort of back. 
Um, so that's just something to know, you know, you'll be up when everyone else is asleep. So something to be aware of. So number four. So they do tell you that your fingernails can get dark and your toenails can get dark and you know, that's something you're like, okay, that's fine. I can deal with that. You know, just put some polish on it. But people actually lose their fingernails and toenails, which can be very painful. So, you know, just be careful. Talk to your doctor. You know, if you start to, to see something moving around there, a lot of people soak their nails as well. And I've heard that that's not so great and you, they can get infected. So be very careful. Talk to your doctor if you find that your nails are getting really, really dark. Um, and see if they can recommend any course of treatment for you before they get infected. Number five is a doozy, and that is because of a drug called Nulasta. So if you're doing the AC regimen, which is also called the Red Devil, maybe we'll talk about that at another time, but you sometimes get this uh, particular drug called Nulasta to help with your blood count or keep your blood count up. Now, this drug, while it is helping keep your blood count up, can also cause severe bone pain. Um, and I'm talking like, you know, you can't like walk. It can be very, very extreme, very painful. And for me, it also affected my skin. So not only were my joints hurting, but my skin was like, it was painful to the touch, which was so weird. And, and no one told me about that. So, you know, just be mindful, you know, it's part of the process. It hurt for about a day or two um, after you got the shot. Um, and then, you know, you slowly start to, to feel a whole lot better, but just be mindful that, you know, that's part of the process and it's working and doing its thing. It just sucks. Okay, we're at number six and number six is hot flashes. It's really the fact that chemo puts you in a postmenopausal state and can just throw your body hormones off of it and you can get you some good hot flashes. Now, so for someone like me who was always cold, I mean like shivering my way through life, having hot flashes has been a completely new and shocking experience to me, one that it's very difficult to describe, but I like to use the analogy of the Fantastic Four when the guy's like, flame on. <laughs> Um, that's kind of how I feel and the sweat just appears out of nowhere and it's dripping down your face so you know maybe don't wear makeup <laughs> too often and get you some clothes that are breathable and you know uh, just cool keep you cool so hot flashes yeah fun stuff number seven uh, so this one's actually kind of weird and kind of funny a bit so different drugs actually affect different hair follicles on your body. So that first drug regimen that we talked about before, that AC, that red devil regimen, that actually will um, affect the hair on your head and the hair on your body, even your pubic area, you can lose hair there as well. Um, but the second regimen that I took, Taxol, that actually affected my eyebrows and my eyelashes. So your hair is gonna like disappear and grow in different places at different rates. And it's just really, really, really strange. The other thing is, if you can see my hair right now, is I am two weeks post chemo and my hair is growing back. It started to grow back before I finished my regimen of Taxol but it also has grown back white. This was not the color of my hair before. I didn't say gray, I said white. So, um, and straight. So, you know, that's the other thing is like your post chemo hair may not be the same hair that you actually had prior to chemo. Okay, <laughs> talk about surprises. But at this point, you're just going with the flow. You're happy to have some hair at all. And you know, have fun with it. And I know I said I was gonna give you guys seven, seven things that were just kind of like weird um, that no one really tells you about, but I wanted to introduce a bonus one. And this one to me is kind of like the most important one that no one really tells you is that even when you're finished chemo, you finish your drug regimen, it can take six to 12 months for the side effects to kind of wear off. Um, 
So, you know, you think once you ring that bell and you're done with your chemotherapy, maybe after a week or two, you're gonna go back to feeling like yourself. Not necessarily the case. Your body has to get all of this stuff out of your system and, you know, it takes a while, a long, long while. So, you know, you can be going through um, a period of up to a year before you start to feel like normal. So I just thought I would share these observations that I've had um, and things that I've experienced with you guys. I hope this was helpful and you feel like you at least know a little bit more about chemotherapy than you did when we started. All right, take care guys, bye.